Gentleman uh, yields back. The gentleman from Nevada, uh, Mr. Horsford, is now recognized for five minutes. I want to thank the chairman and the ranking member uh, for this hearing, and to you, Chair Powell, for appearing before the committee to discuss the recently published monetary policy report. As we continue our work on behalf of the American people, we have to keep in mind that our mission here is to grow the economy from the bottom up and the middle out. It seems as if there has been a constant series of shocks to the economy, both domestically and globally, and yet we can all see just how resilient the labor market has been as it has maintained its strength. With a robust gain of 353,000 jobs, the January numbers are a continuation of the trend that Democrats in Congress delivered through historic investments in our workforce, putting people over politics. In light of this relative economic strength, I really want to implore the Federal Reserve to take stock of the holistic economic picture before making decisions on monetary policy and to pay particular attention to those communities that have been historically left behind during times of accelerated recovery. I want to add to the questions uh, from my colleague, Congresswoman Presley, Chair Powell. At a time when, where it has become increasingly difficult for working people and people of color in particular to purchase a home, I worry that rising mortgage rates will put working families even further behind on accessing the wealth and equity that a home provides. So what actions, if any, is the Federal Reserve considering to better understand and to mitigate the impacts that your Basel III proposal may have on minority borrowers with, who disproportionately rely on high LTV mortgages due to the generational wealth gap that, pers that persists? We are, uh, we've received comments, including many, on the, on the mortgage changes, and we understand the concerns, and uh, you know, we're looking very carefully at that have made any decisions, but uh, you know we will announce them when we have. Are you concerned that these shifts in risk weights will reinforce the decade-long retreat of banks from the mortgage market and push more originations to non-bank institutions? That's a question that people are raising, and it's something we take very seriously, and we'll be taking that into consideration as we, as we, as we decide about that, that change, that, that recommended change. Could you discuss why you feel it is necessary to include new requirements around operational risk in Basel III in light of recent claims that it will, it will significantly increase the cost of or prevent banks from offering altogether necessary services such as underwriting, investment advisory, or insurance? That is, that is one of the concerns that's been articulated about the proposed changes to operating risk. We take those concerns seriously. As, as I mentioned, we're in the middle of, of looking at these things and then we'll soon, in the process of turning uh, to, to the question of what changes to make. Well, I just would underscore the sense of urgency because the longer there's uncertainty in the market, it creates really negative effects to end users, which are all of our constituents who are looking to see these uh, costs come down. Let me shift. This Congress, under the leadership of Ranking Member Waters and former CBC Chair Joyce Beatty, I've made it a focus of my efforts to educate my colleagues and the public at large on the far-reaching benefits of increased diversity in the workplace, in our boardrooms, and in society as a whole. Despite the efforts by some on the other side to take away the very tools of economic opportunity that create inclusive work environments and improve performance, uh, there has been a really misguided assault on everything from diversity, equity, and inclusion um, to other programs uh, following the aftermath of the Supreme Court's ruling on affirmative action. So Chairman Powell, as you know, your Office of Minority and Women Inclusion uh, has a focus on this. So as we anticipate the upcoming release of your annual report on inclusion, would you be able to speak to the necessity of collecting this data that minority and women-owned businesses are included in the board's contracting and acquisition opportunities? I do believe we collect that data and we monitor that very carefully. And why is it important? Well, I, I, think, um, I think diversity in the workplace is, is an important thing and you won't know how you're doing unless you measure it. And 
just as the McKinsey Institute released in their Diversity Matters Even More report, companies that have more diverse management teams actually outperform companies that don't. That goes to the bottom line of our economy, and I wish my colleagues on the other side would stop their assault on diversity, equity, and inclusion and actually work with us to grow the economy. Gentlemen's time for everyone.